a lot of people say that this is um, an exceptionally important presidential campaign, and I, and I think every campaign is exceptionally important. But as far as Israel and the Jewish community are concerned, this is really important because I think it's the last time we're going to see in the White House a Zionist president. Biden is a Zionist president. Uh, what does it mean to be a Zionist? He truly believes in the right of the Jewish people to have their own national homeland. He's connected personally to the leadership from almost Israel's very inception. As a young senator, he met with Golda Meir, for example. There are pictures of him with Golda Meir. He knew all of Israel's leaders since the late 1960s. There's no one in the American political system with that kind of connection to Israel anymore. And I'm setting aside the question of whether his decisions were great, good or not, but his response to 10-7 was unbelievable, the fact that he showed up 10 days after the attack um, in Israel, uh, something that he had never done, no other president had ever done, so, so near, so, so fresh after um, uh, such an attack, uh, putting himself at risk uh, just to come to Israel and to make a statement. And so obviously, um, whoever's gonna be the president on January 20th, 2025 in the White House, will not be as emotionally connected and committed to Israel as, uh, as Joe Biden. I think that that's, uh, that's, that's a fact that cannot be dis disputed. The other reason why this is really an exceptionally important moment in the, in the life of the American people and, and, and the Western world is because as an open, liberal, pluralistic democracy, the United States, just like Canada, just like Israel, just like the United Kingdom, just like Australia and other liberal countries with open democratic systems, we are vulnerable to external intervention. And the intervention is meant to destroy our social fabric. And all they have to do is introduce a doubt, a doubt. That's all. It, they don't even have to bring evidence. And it can be about any issue. It can be about race. It can be about gender. It can be about vaccinations, about COVID-19. It can be about anything. And what happens is that the open pluralistic societies are vulnerable to that because they allow a debate. Because, again, in the name of free speech, we allow toxic conversation that destroys society from within. And that's what we're seeing. And so the binary view of reality, and in some cases it is a binary choice. Like for example, when you see Americans supporting Hamas and you want the candidates to say, no, you can support the national aspirations of the Palestinian people, that's legitimate. What you can't do is support a terrorist organization that wants to destroy Western values, that wants to destroy the United States, that wants to destroy Israel. You cannot burn American flags. You know, I participated in a pro-Israel rally in Times Square a few weeks ago, and there was, uh, across the street, a, a pro-Palestinian rally, while in the pro-Israel rally, you had people holding uh, the Israeli flag and the flag of the United States, uh, the host of the rally pointed to the fact, he said, look the other side, look at the pro-Palestinians. Not only that they're not holding, you will not see them having one American flag, but they're actually trying to burn those flags. And that's the whole story right there. So this election campaign is about moral clarity. And I think that Americans, while they're not voting on the issue of the Middle East, they're looking for the candidate that will present them with more moral clarity on the issues that they care about. And of course, those issues, um, there's a long list of issues that are uh, deeply corresponding with the DNA of the American people. And lastly, this is from Israel's perspective, the elections are faithful and extremely important because whoever is going to be in the White House 
in January of 2025, we'll have to make a decision what to do with Iran. Iran is the foremost destabilizer in the world. They have held this position since the late 1970s. They're holding captive not only the Iranian people, they're holding captive the vulnerable regimes in their neighborhood. In Syria, they supported Assad against the Syrian people. In Bahrain, they support the Bahraini people against the regime, and so on and so forth. You see their fingerprints and their footprints in Yemen, in Iraq, in Turkey, in Lebanon, in, uh, in almost every country that they can infiltrate, in North Africa, certainly in the West Bank and Gaza. And so it becomes a priority for the United States to tackle the issue of Iran, because look at what they're doing with conventional weapons. Can one imagine what this regime is capable of doing with nuclear weapons? The very idea that nuclear Iran is solely Israel's problem is ridiculous. Nuclear Iran is not just Israel's problem. It's the West's problem. It's predominantly Europe's problem. Europe is within range of Iranian ballistic missiles. Iran attacked Israel directly, crossing a red line and defying U.S. warnings twice. In April, of 2024 and in October of 2024, they launched 500 items, including hundreds of ballistic missiles and drones, 500, 320 in the first attack and 180 ballistic missiles in the second attack, spending billions. What was the end result? The vast majority of those items were intercepted by Israel, the United States, United Kingdom, even Saudi Arabia and Jordan participated in the defense of Israel, believe it or not. But the first attack resulted in one Muslim Bedouin girl badly injured. Second attack resulted in the killing of one Palestinian from Gaza who happened to visit Jericho in the West Bank. So Iran, the great defender of Islam, launching 500 missiles against Israel, endangering the life of one Muslim girl and killing one Palestinian. If this was not sad, it would have been funny. It's as if a line taken from a crazy, wacky comedy in Hollywood. But that's the reality we live in. And so the presidential elections are extremely critical because it will give us an answer to the question of whether the United States has the stamina or the will to put together an international coalition that will include more likely Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, Germany, Italy, France, to take out the Iranian nuclear program. It's of utmost importance to the entire Western world. 